Joining us now in the Element Well Studios, Dr. Catherine Philippi, pediatrician with Trust Care. Uh, Dr. Philippi, thanks for coming in. So uh, we got some word that this RSV is yes. uh, really spreading, and you and I were just talking off the air, especially uh, amongst children. Yes. Said you're seeing a lot. Yes. Explain to everybody exactly what this is. So RSV is respiratory syncytial virus, and it is a viral illness that causes upper respiratory congestion, runny nose, cough, sore throat. And in infants who have a more naive immune system and smaller airways, it can cause very significant respiratory distress in the form of wheezing or um, even respiratory failure. So um, we have seen a huge rise in that, uh, and um, along with um, some other respiratory illnesses. And like we were talking about earlier, I think getting, you know, not only the ragweed is blooming, the weather is changing, people are getting colds, that in you and I might just be an annoyance in an infant or a young child or a child with asthma, if it's RSV, it would be very difficult to get over. Hmm. So um, it, it's rapidly transmissible um, through respiratory droplets. And, you know, of course, children don't wash their hands great under four, I would say. And, um, you know, they rub their nose a lot if it's running. So you're transmitting it to surfaces and in daycares, it can just mm. spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you test for it to know that's what it is? So similar to the COVID test, we've we've had RSV testing my whole career, um, but you you do a nasal swab and you have a rapid result okay. in like five to ten minutes. What what's different? Why why now all of a sudden this is a surge? Because this is happening across the country. Yes. This isn't unique, obviously, to Mississippi. So definitely in the past. So RSV is typically seasonal. So we would say November to March is quote unquote RSV season. Okay. And so, but with COVID and with the social distancing and all of the masking, we did not see RSV in its typical form. So hmm. we saw less overall, and it sporadically popped up throughout the different months with not a lot of rhyme or reason. Um, as we kind of relaxed our guidelines on COVID, we started to see more. And actually in August, which is really unusual, we had a huge spike nationwide with a lot of hospitalizations. Um, the spike that is occurring now is looking very similar to that spike. So um, I don't really understand that. Um, yeah. I, I think people, you know, that are studying epidemiology and, and how COVID affected illnesses in general across the board, especially respiratory illnesses, are trying to put together the pieces and make it make sense. What are the warning signs? How does one, let's say a parent of a child, uh, differentiate between that and just a common cold? So definitely in a younger child, it can start with a creepy or barky cough. Um, the cough progressively gets worse, and you, ha you can have um, a lot of respiratory congestion and wheezing is very common in infants, a bad runny nose, fever. All of those things are not um, uncommon with a cold, but with RSV, it tends to progress, you know, over a period of days to very severe in an infant um, within a few days. We usually say RSV peaks on day seven, which is late, you know, for a respiratory illness. Um, and so once they come in with fever and we can identify that it is RSV, I'm able to say this is not just a common cold. So these are the warning signs to watch for. Hmm. And then you're better educated about what to do if it gets worse. How do you treat it? Well, that's that's the hard thing. Um, we use antihistamines to control the drip of the nose, um, suction, saline. Um, at times we will use um, inhalers or albuterol treatments, which is just going to help if if you were an asthmatic you would use that so it's the same concept it would open the airways and facilitate a better cough response because infants don't cough you know their secretions mm -hmm. up very well um, and it would help eliminate the wheezing part of the illness so not everyone needs a breathing treatment but for sure if your doctor listens to the child's chest and feels like they're wheezing and it's significant especially if it affects their oxygen level we'll often use breathing treatments hmm. um, in the worst case scenarios we use steroids 
um, if you can imagine keeping a snotty nose and, and chest congestion for seven days and being very young, often we see secondary infections like ear infections, sinus infections, pneumonias. Um, and right now, I think our ERs are swamped with both flu and RSV. Mm. What about uh, ultimately having to check them in the hospital? So definitely the oxygen level is the key. I think a lot of parents these days have, because of COVID and because of um, all the gadgets that new parents have these days, um, oxygen monitoring is not uncommon. Um, and there was a time where I thought that was not very necessary, but as we embarked on this COVID journey, I think they've been super helpful with infants who either have COVID or RSV. And mm. so checking their oxygen level, um, if they have distress, I always tell parents, if you could put your child in a glass box and you couldn't hear them because they can sound really bad, really congested, a really bad cough. But if they're smiling and eating a puff or taking their bottle and smiling at you, then they're not in distress. Okay. Um, if they look distressed, they're not eating well, they're they're looking anxious, they're leaning forward, breathing really hard. We, we talk about abdominal breathing where their belly moves with each breath. Those are things that we would recommend you be seen for. And if it's at night and you can't get to your doctor, you go to the ER. Hmm. Is the, uh, the, the gadgets that test oxygen levels, is that something that could detect it and, or, or at least differentiate between that and a cold? No, but if you have a positive diagnosis, it, it's a helpful tool um, to make sure all of us, when we sleep, we don't control our airway quite as well. Um, and when you're sick, you, you will do that even less. And sure. infants, for sure, can drop their oxygen levels when they sleep at night when they have RSV. So um, many people have what's called an owlet monitor, um, which I laugh about because so many of my pediatrician friends and I did not encourage the use of that because there's a lot of anxiety that it can cause when it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Sure, sure. But for this situation, I think it has been helpful for my patients. Right. Are there any, uh, are there different strains or is there kind of one or does it matter? So RSV is like a cold virus. There are lots of different strains and our immunity does, it wanes. So you can have RSV more than once a year even. Mm. Um, and for kids who wheeze and who keep kind of chronic congestion from allergies or whatever, they're more prone to catch RSV. Okay. I got you. Uh, are we seeing multiple strains in the state of Mississippi? We don't test for the strains okay. in the office, so I can't really speak educated about that. I would guess we are, just like we're seeing multiple strains of flu. Is there concern that we have uh, flu season coming up? Yes. We got, we're going to be inside more, yes. more COVID spread, yes. and this. Yes. So the national news is talking about, you know, that those three illnesses together, especially in children, could cause a huge problem because our hospitals are not equipped for that, that degree. If you just have COVID, that's one thing. Yeah. But to have all three, it would be really devastating. Wow. So you can have COVID and RSV yes. simultaneously. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's incredible. Um, it, so is RSV like COVID in that where it really gets uh, uh, progresses is when it infects and fills your lungs up? Definitely. And just like I said before, like, you know, it, you and I have bigger airways, so we tolerate congestion in our lungs better than an infant. So yeah. for RSV, COVID was more unpredictable. For RSV, most healthy adults do well with it okay but they go to the store and they go to work and they work at daycares and they have a little cough mm -hmm. and a runny nose and they spread it so, so it sounds like it's a, really is a bigger a risk to younger people yes definitely wow. is there anything parents or schools need to be aware of that they can um, sort of help to mitigate spread I definitely think identifying people quickly that are sick, that have fever, and getting them out of the general population. And then, of course, hand hand washing and hand sanitation, however you can do it. Um, and then, you know, if you're an older child and you can be taught to cough into your hand or your not not into yeah, your hand. Yeah. I said that wrong. Cough into your arm right. and, and not put your hands on your face. You not gestured your it nose. correctly for those <laughs> watching. So say it again. So if you have a cough, 
and you can teach your child to cough into their arm instead of their hand and to wash their hands frequently and keep their hands off their nose and their mouth. Mm. Super helpful. Well, let's hope this settles down because uh, I know we already have stress on the medical community. We don't need something else. Yes. Dr. Catherine Philippi has been our guest. She's a pediatrician with Trust Care talking about RSV. Thanks for coming on, Doctor. Thank Appreciate you. It. Yep. Folks, we'll be right back. We got more to talk about from the Element Well Studio.